You should try Milburn's beer. It's brewed in the city, and it ain't bad. We got a lot of bars in the city. All class drugs. Well, is that right? I'm proud to be helping the Free Star Rangers. Come in, Deputy. Take a seat. While you've been in the field, we've had more reports about farmers being threatened and attacked. Unfortunately, some didn't survive. It's worse. It's tragic. How's your investigation proceeding? That's assuming he finds something useful. Otherwise, you'll be no better off than when you started. How can you be so critical when you have done nothing to help? This is Freestar Ranger business. I'll thank you to stay out of it. Let's move on. I asked the other rangers to share their opinions of you, and there are some things I want to go over. We'll start with Ranger Callow in Hopetown. She was grateful for your timely arrival, and impressed you had the guts to take on those pirates. Nia says you were respectful with Ron Hope and didn't push too hard. That shows me you were listening when I said to go easy on him. I can understand that. He can be uncompromising, but he looks after his people. Let's continue. We got a detailed report from Ranger Price about your recent visit to Neon. He said you met an informant who asked for your help, but you talked him out of it. Helping people with their problems is what we do. That doesn't stop because you're on an investigation. You got results and that's what matters most. Price was impressed by that. Said you really took the initiative. Ranger McMillan praised what she called your uncommon bravery and dedication. She said you took on the Red Mile so you could get a meeting with Marco Graziani. Putting the lives of others ahead of our own comes with the job. I'm sure it was a tough call, but I think it was the right one. So what happened with Marco? I doubt he gave you that slate out of the kindness of his heart. Yeah, he always did like to hear himself talk. Seemed to think he was the smartest guy in the room. Don't know about that. But at least he had the sense to cooperate. What about Maya Cruz? Her loyalty to Hull and the 1st Cavalry was stronger than most. I guess I'd want the same thing if I were in her place. Excuse me, Marshal? Not now, Alex. We're in a meeting here. I know, but this is important. I've done it. I've cracked the encryption on the slates. Now, I don't know exactly where the first are headquartered, but there are references to a place called the Factory. The Factory? That was our nickname for the main facility where the mechs were manufactured. Under the terms of the peace treaty, they shut all the mech factories down right after the war. But they didn't destroy them. At least not all of them. Never saw it myself, but I know it's a large facility, mostly underground. If the first are occupying it, they'll probably have set up defensive positions throughout the complex. The facility was on Arcturus too. It could be a dead end, but if it's not, then you'd better be ready for a fight. If you have questions before you head out, ask the Marshal.
any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that what the saying goes? Pressure holding. Takeoff looks good.
elevator seems to be the best way up the mesa, if it is still functional.
Paxton Hull, commanding officer of the 1st. Marshal Blake must be getting desperate sending a lone deputy out here. But I'll give credit where it's due. You're a hell of a pilot. If you came here seeking justice, it's waiting for you inside. for checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. Prepare to die. Threat neutralized. You cannot beat me.
First Cavalry was the greatest fighting force the Freestar Collective has ever seen. At the Battle of Nera, the First Cavalry was destroyed. Why? Because the generals got scared and asked for a truce. I've got no sympathy for cowards or for the people who put them in power. Contact! I've always Contact! Had Best not to leave anything useful behind.
come here seeking justice? Well, what about justice for my soldiers? Minutes away, minutes from winning the battle and the war when the ceasefire order came down. Now there's a debt of honor, and the people, Free Star Collective, are going. This is a testament to how devastating the war was, how determined both sides were to claim victory. Had more like you in the war. We could have planted our flag in New Atlantis. Not the way it should have. Of course, I can't expect you to understand what we sacrificed, what we lost. You don't know what it's like to look around and see the faces of warriors who trusted you to lead them as they die screaming. I watched brave men and women torn limb from limb by monsters. I saw mech pilots cooked alive in their cockpits as their machines burned. <clears throat> Those deaths didn't have to be meaningless, but spineless leaders gave up on us even when victory was within our grasp. Do not assume you know what others have or have not experienced and none of it gives you the right to take innocent lives. You don't know me, so don't preach to me about what I do or don't have the right to do. You really want to know? Because you might not like the answer. Last chance, deputy. You can walk away right now and remain blissfully ignorant, thinking you fight for a noble cause. But if you still want the truth, <laughs> I'll shatter that illusion for you right now. <laughs> we'll see about that. 
Not long after I started the first, I was contacted by a man who said he represented someone wealthy and influential. <laughs> I refused to work for a shadow client, so we agreed to set up a meeting. Imagine my surprise when Ron Hope showed up. He offered me a lucrative contract to take possession of certain farms throughout Free Star Space. The credits were good, but yeah, getting some payback was the real reward. You think I've lost? Is that it? I haven't lost. <laughs> you go find Ron Hope and tell him what I've told you. Then you can deal out whatever justice you see fit. You do your job, and I get one last piece of vengeance against the Council. What he wants does not matter. They should both face justice. I know. For whatever it may be worth, I agree with you. I'm gonna make this easy for you, deputy. I'm gonna die the way I lived. Weapon in hand, no compromise, no fear. But first, here, take this. Use it to cut out the weakness rotting at the heart of the Freestar Collective. When the next war comes, <laughs> and it will come. The Collective needs to be strong. Now my unit's waiting for me, and I'm gonna report for duty one last time. Goodbye, Deputy. I don't want to hear any complaints. Ron hopes the best thing that's happened to us. A fair amount of business runs through Hope Town, and from what I understand. I have never liked Hope Tech ships. Though I suppose that is hardly the point of them.
very generous, Mr. Hope. It's well earned, Birgit. But we be dust. We said some ambitious quote. Good to see you again. Well, I've just received a report from the Marshal about your progress. He said you had a promising lead on the mercenaries who stole my ship. I trust you're here with good news. Did you now? Well, don't keep me in suspense. Oh, the, the same Paxton Hull who was court-martialed during the Colony War? Well, I've, I've never met the man, and, and I can't imagine why he'd make an accusation against me. Two faced bastard kept the slate. Oh, I suppose this is his revenge against the Council of Governors for what happened during the war. <laughs> I'm impressed, Deputy. It's clear you have a bright future ahead of you. What's going on? What is this about, Mr. Hope? Nothing that concerns you, Birgit. Why don't you make yourself scarce? I think I'd like to hear what the deputy has to say. Ah, the cards are on the table. So why not? The truth is, we've been falling behind the competition. <laughs> Significantly so. We needed solutions. A few years ago, I began to diversify. We started to research chemicals, fuel, those sort of things. We developed an experimental fertilizer. Oh, and it failed utterly. It wiped out entire crops. I was prepared to write the whole thing off. When we made a discovery that changed everything, turns out our fertilizer was transforming the soil bolstering its mineral content tenfold. We donated the fertilizer to select homesteads and let the farmers do the work. And when the time was right, we cleared the farm and brought in machinery to harvest the mineral-rich soil. The reduction in labor and materials costs sent my profits soaring. You sit on the Council of Governors. You betrayed the very people you are supposed to represent. I wish there'd been another way. But I had to play the hand I was dealt. Look. I'll level with you. We're falling behind the competition. The hardworking people of this town depend on me for their livelihoods, and I won't let them down. Cutting my costs means saving their jobs. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How could you do something so, so awful to innocent people, to families? Not another word out of you, Birgit. I can take your job and more. We'll discuss this later. In any case, I suppose the gig is up. I give you my word that I'll call off the operation and return the land to its rightful owners. Like I said, I give you my word. Besides, the work was just about done. With that resolved, Let's talk about you. As a member of the Council of Governors, I'm authorized to award you a substantial bonus. And of course, we'll both agree to forget about my little cost-cutting endeavor.
Did I not make myself clear? I'm offering you a reward for a job well done. Nothing more. And with that job so capably done, we'll consider the matter closed? I'll be needing that slate from Major Hull, of course. For well, let's not be too hasty, Deputy. There's something else you need to consider. I'll do what's necessary to protect my company and my employees. If you tell anyone about this, you're risking their livelihoods. Do you really want to put all these people out of work and make their families suffer? But on a much larger scale, yes. I'm afraid there's no avoiding it. The past can't be changed. But the future is very much in your hands, Deputy. You put me away, and this company will fall apart. You have destroyed far more lives than I did. I'll make myself very plain. I won't let you jeopardize my reputation, this company, or the people who work for me. If that means you suffer an unfortunate incident at the hands of my security personnel, so be it. I'm important. You're nothing. You're not actually threatening to attack a free star ranger are you you have overestimated your position mr hope you just threatened a member of the council of governors on my authority you're stripped of rank, declared an outlaw. Guards! Dispose of this criminal! Do they have anything of value? If you are free soon, could we talk? What is it? to have you killed i don't understand mr hope always seemed like such a good person but everything he said about the farmers and hiring those mercenaries it was so awful the first part is true he always looked out for us for his employees We never saw that side of him. And now he's... You. You killed him. Nobody should ever want that. Especially when it means killing someone who meant so much to so many people. <sighs> what happens to us now? That's... that would be... Elana. Elana Nwankwo. She seems pretty capable. Maybe... maybe we'll 
be okay after all. I guess we'll have to figure things out. Find a path forward. There are uncertain times ahead for you, but they will pass. I went through. I have things I wish to discuss with you when you have time. You have my attention. I have been thinking about what we talked about before the idea of purpose in one's life. You agreed with me that true purpose can be a driving force in life. I found that comforting, but something has been nagging at me since. I have been single-minded in my pursuits. I have always believed the decisions I made were necessary, that there was no other option. I have sacrificed much to be where I am now. And I'm starting to wonder if it has been worth it. Doubts have never been something I would consider. I have told you that I am not one to discuss my past. And yet... No, that is not what I am trying to say. I promised to provide for my family. That meant working with smugglers to procure supplies we could not acquire any other way. I have spent my adult life away from my home, jumping from one planet to the next, living in dangerous conditions, often surrounded by violence. This is true, but I have only experienced my own. I was convinced from the beginning that it was unwise to let anyone get too close. I had, maybe not quite friends, but people I cared about. Yet there was always a distance I could not reach across. I often find other people complicated and confusing. It seemed easier to not become attached, especially when circumstances meant I I might never see them again, with no warning. Until now I have disagreed strongly with that idea, but therein lies my concern. What I am trying to say is that I now wonder whether it has been the right decision to distance myself from others. No, of course not. The mission comes first. I suppose we should get back to it then. Nobody's allowed outside the city walls after nightfall. It's for their own safety. Deputy. Good to see you back safe, Deputy. What's the word on the mech factory? Were the mercenaries hiding out there? Damn, 
you've got guts of steel. Did you find out why the first was taking over farms? Wait a damn minute. You're saying Ron Hope was behind this whole thing? Are you really that surprised? Hope's always had a reputation as a man who'd do anything to succeed. He's on the damn council, Emma. So he can make laws favorable to his business interests. Sure, he's known to look after his people, but do you really think he gives a damn about some farmers on Montara Luna? Did Hope explain his motives at all? That has a familiar ring to it. I recall hearing about some Hope Tech initiative to help farmers. At the time, I just figured it was a PR stunt. Seems a little more sinister now. Please, tell me you've got some evidence to back up these extraordinary claims. All right, let's see what you've got. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this is pretty damning. Especially this last bit about destroying the slate. And you confronted Hope about this? Sounds like his pride got the best of him. Damn. This is going to send shockwaves throughout the Free Star Collective. If the people can't trust their leaders, anarchy could follow. Have a little faith, Daniel. We're not the United Colonies. One bad apple won't spoil the whole damn barrel. Easy for you to say. You ain't the Marshal. Not yet, but you ain't gonna live forever, old man. While we've got you here, there's one last piece of business to take care of. Emma, would you please? With pleasure, Marshal. When you first joined us, I told you that you'd undergo an evaluation process. There's one thing left to do. A simple question. Do you feel ready to wear the badge of a full-fledged Freestar Ranger? Good. Duty and honor are the backbone of the Freestar Rangers. Marshal, I approve the deputy for advancement to the rank of Ranger. Thank you, Ranger Wilcox. In your time serving as a deputy, you've shown exceptional courage, fearless tenacity, and a high regard for the safety of our citizens. By the authority granted to me by the Council of Governors, I hereby promote you to the rank of Ranger. Here's your badge. Wear it with pride. But don't forget the solemn responsibility it represents. Well done. I know you will, Ranger. Let's hear it for our new Ranger. Oh, oh great. Great. Good job, Ranger. Ranger. to talk, actually. Well, cool. Apologize, Marlon.